Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of The Articulate Fly, and we're here with a Clean the Dream volunteer spotlight with Scott Robertson. Scott, welcome to The Articulate Fly. Hey, great to be here. Uh, Excited to talk to you about this. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we have a tradition on The Articulate Fly. We always like to ask our guests to share their earliest fishing memory. All right. Um, So earliest fishing memory. So I grew up in uh, Kailua Kona, Hawaii. Um, You know, I've I've got some kind of some real vague memories of like some charter boat rides and and some stuff like that with my dad or some of his friends. Um, but one that I think kind of sticks out to me, uh, every year, uh, in the, in the boy Scouts, we used to do this little fishing tournament at the, uh, Kona village resort. And they had all these ponds and little waterways in there that would get, uh, kind of over, overpopulated with tilapia and, uh, not a very, uh, uh, beautiful story, but we'd use these, you know, bamboo rods, kind of almost like tenkara fishing, I guess, uh, with just a line tied off on the end and then a, a hook and some bread. But it was it was kind of one of those things year to year. It was like we'd go there and you just catch a whole pile of fish and and have a lot of fun. And, and we were kind of helping helping that resort with the population control in the ponds. Yeah, very neat. When did you come to the dark side of fly fishing? Oh, um, let's see. We moved to Colorado when I was. Uh, about 12 and spent probably two to three years still just spin fishing here. So I think it was about 14 or 15. Um, and that was actually a pretty cool story. I know, you know, my, I'd been fishing with my dad all those years and and he switched over, uh, before I did. And then there was one day we were in 11 mile Canyon and, uh, you know, I was, I was down there spin fishing and, and he was on this hole and, uh, you know, the fish were just going crazy on the surface and he was pulling them out one after the other. And he looks to me and he goes, Scott, you, you got to get up here. He goes, you're going to catch a fish on a fly rod. I promise. I promise. Come over here. And, uh, and so he hands me his rod and, you know, Hey, just flick it out here, watch the fly. Boom. Sure enough, there was one. Okay. And then, so, you know, him and I just spent the afternoon on that hole kind of posted up, just switch hitting and having a really good time. And, you know, from, from that point forward, it was like, Oh, I, I need to get one of these. Yeah. Very, very neat. And, you know, who are some of the folks that have mentored you on your fly fishing journey and what have they taught you? Um, you know, my dad was, was definitely a big one. He got me into it. Um, but it was, it was, you know, kind of funny. We were sort of learning at the same time. Um, you know, I think he had done like a guided trip, a little more experience, you know, than I did, um, and kind of got me set up and going, but him and I both did, uh, I think it was the like nymphing one oh one class through, through Angler's Covey down here. And I, you know, that was 21 years ago now. So I don't remember who, who the uh, guys were teaching that, but I remember that was a pretty big turning point and at least just catching fish on my fly rod, um, learning, you know, the proper setup and kind of going through the diagrams and, and, you know, just how the bugs are supposed to look underwater and how that's all supposed to work. And so knowing the mechanics then at that point, um, really helped just going out and doing it. Um, you know, from there, uh, probably, you know, Kramer, um, running into him up in, uh, up in, uh, Fort Collins at CSU. Um, him and I started going out fishing together a bunch and, and there was, you know, a lot more, I think stealth tactics and, and, you know, some just different presentation, um, you know, some different tricks and stuff I'd kind of picked up from him and, and him and I would go out a lot together. Um, you know, aside from that, just, a you know, a lot of trial and error too, on my own, figuring out, you know, what would work, what wouldn't work. Um, spending a lot of hard days, <laughs> spending, you know, 45 minutes getting a rig tied up and then, uh, um, just, just to have it break off. You know, I think actually, um, Kramer was the one that showed me, uh, you know, using your hemostats to tie all your knots. And I think that really sped my game up probably, uh, you know, just him more frustrated, like, Hey, hurry up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. No. So I, you know, I'd say probably, you know, my dad and, and, Kramer has been two of my best fishing friends, you know, through this kind of my bulk of my fly fishing uh, career, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And I think too, I mean, you're incredibly fortunate. I mean, a lot of people don't live close to uh, a fly shop and, you know, you've got a handful of great shops where you are. Oh yeah. No. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just down the road from 
uh, Angler's Cubby, probably probably a little too close for you know my my checking account comfort. But um, there's uh, then you know the Peak Fly Shop. There's one in Woodland Park, and then there's you know one just in the middle of town down here. Um, yeah, it's it's there's a plethora of of different spots to go. You know, just really within minutes from from my place. So yeah, absolutely. And so, how did you meet Landon? Um, well, I met Landon through Kramer and let's see, that was, oh, probably eight, nine years ago, maybe a little longer. We went out, um, uh, I think it was in February, went up to the dream stream and I think Landon was getting some pictures for a high country angler. And, and so we spent the day fishing up there. Um, I think we did get chased off by the wind that afternoon. It was a particularly blustery day, but um, that was my first time, you know, getting to meet Landon and then, uh, spoke with him, you know, I guess more frequently throughout the years as, as, uh, you know, just being friends with Kramer. And then once this, uh, clean the dream started, um, you know, it's, I've spent a lot of time talking with Landon, planning this thing, uh, you know, over the last seven years here and, and, you know, our friendship has really grown, um, through this with the clean the dream. Yeah. And so, you know, how exactly did you get involved with the event? Um, well, it started with, uh, Kramer, you know, just kind of called me up, said, Hey, you know, I pitched this idea to land in he's in, um, you know, would, would you be there to, to help me when we kind of get this whole thing set? And then, you know, I was like, it was a no brainer. I said, of course. Um, you know, so that was, that was kind of how I got into it. Um, you know, I didn't realize from year one, kind of what this was going to become, you know, I, I never thought of myself as like a, a key volunteer. It was just, you know, Hey, we're, we're, we're all here to help out. And then, you know, just, uh, kind of kept coming back year after year. Yeah. Very, very neat. And so what have you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you probably, you do a little bit of everything, but give folks an idea of what you do in a general year on clean the dream. So, you know, it's, it's definitely morphed a lot over the years. So, you know, that first year, I think there was maybe about 20 of us uh, all together that showed up. Um, so, you know, it was a kind of a quick, we all met in the parking lot and then uh, um, we uh, branched out from there and kind of just as, you know, okay, we'll take this section. All right, you take this section, you know, branch out and go, um, you know, and then as as more and more people have uh, have started attending and showing up, I mean, now it's like, kind of all I can do to, to help, you know, check everybody in, run some traffic control, kind of get the, the, the whole thing off and running, um, before it settles, settles down. And, and we still get out and, and, you know, go clean up and hit some of the different spots, but it's branched out so much farther. I mean, now we're more, you know, Hey, we've got a ton of people on the river. Let's go down to 11 mile. Um, but outside of that, I mean, you know, it's just getting up early, um, helping to set up, you know, we, uh, we kind of, uh, loan, um, you know, the easy ups, tables, chairs, bring all that up there, get those all set up in the morning, um, help land and lug around the, the, uh, all the, the raffle prizes. It, it's kind of amazing how many trucks it takes to get <laughs> all the stuff up to that, uh, parking lot to set up the event and then, you know, tear it all down afterwards and, you know, run over to, uh, um, CPW returned some of the, their buckets and grabbers and that kind of stuff, you know, one year CPW was shorthanded. So, you know, we all ran over and, and, you know, helped load all the trash into their compactor. So it just, it kind of varies, but you know, it's, uh, a lot more, I'd say kind of the management into the, the event now than, you know, just hands on. Yeah. And so what kind of brings you back year after year to, to volunteer for clean the dream? Well, um, you know, I mean, I, I love, uh, kind of all the, the waters that South park has to offer. Um, you know, the, the dream streams kind of been a big part of, you know, my fly fishing, uh, my fly fishing journey for the last, you know, 20, 21 years. And so, um, it's one of those things, you know, I just feel compelled to, to want to give back to that. Um, you know, I've got a, a two and a half year old son now, and, and I want that resource to be, um, you know, in the same shape it is now for me, um, as it would be for, for him, you know, in, in 10 more years. Yeah. And I know too, you know, I, you know, it's kind of neat when you have the ability to fish a, a piece of water for a long period of time, like you have, you know, how have you seen the dream change over the 20 or so years you fished it? Um, well, I mean, there's, there's, it's kind of changed in a lot of ways. I mean, I've seen a lot of, you know, just natural changes, you know, there's been, um, big storms, flash floods that'll, you know, 
move different logs and features around in the river. So, you know, you might come, come after a storm and, and, you know, the kind of the landscape of the river is totally different than it was just a, a week ago. Um, you know, there's been some, some man-made changes, some rehabilitation projects down above the, the, uh, bridge, uh, at the parking lot we all meet at. Um, they've done some, some rehabilitation there and even some of that's, you know, degraded and washed out over the years. But, uh, I mean, I think the biggest thing has probably just been, you know, the angling, angling pressure, you know, from 20 years ago to now. Um, I think you just see, I think the fish are just a lot more pressured. Um, you see a lot more people out there, which, you know, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's great that everybody's getting into the sport and and coming out and enjoying it. And it's a beautiful piece of public land that, that we can all do that on. But you know, the, the numbers of people have definitely, definitely increased. Um, that's been kind of the one consistent, you know, thing from, from when I started to now. Yeah. And it's interesting too, right? Cause that, there's a whole opportunity to educate people to support that many folks on the water. And I mean, I'm sure, you know, having that many people brings a lot more trash. So that makes the event all the more impactful. And, you know, if I'm, if I want to come at eight o'clock in the morning on the 27th of August, you know, what can I expect to do at clean the dream? So, um, when you first show up, I think you can expect to, to grab a donut and a coffee or some OJ. Um, you'll meet with either myself, uh, my dad, Landon, um, we're there with, uh, different maps, uh, of each of the, uh, state parks in, in South park and, um, probably direct you out to, um, you know, one of the nearest parks. Uh, we usually talk with CPW first and get, you know, kind of get a beat on, on, where some of the worst areas are. And we try and send folks out to, to target some of those areas. Um, you know, and if, if you don't feel like taking a jaunt, we'll, we'll say, Hey, you know, I'll just run up and down the river here and, and look for what you can find. Yeah. And so, you know, the, it's at eight o'clock on the 27th of August. What's the rallying point? Where's everybody going to meet before they disperse? So that's the, the bridge lot for Charlie Myers, uh, state wildlife area so as you're as you're coming down the road there i'm sorry I don't have the road number uh memorized in my head i know i, I come in on high chaparral and and you know essentially just makes a little jog and takes you straight there but um it's it's that that first lot right there by the uh, bridge where the river goes under the road and uh, there'll be some banners up you'll see tents up um you'll see cones a bunch of people so it's it's impossible to miss if you're if you're heading that way um and yeah that's that's how you where you'll find us yeah. And so what I'll do is I'll drop a link with the poster um, in the show notes and that'll give people all the information. And if I remember correctly from talking to Landon, you know, you don't need to register, you know, you can just show up and you guys will have tools. Maybe people want to bring work gloves, but it's basically as much time as you can give us on the 27th. We'll be more than happy to take it. Right. Yep. No, absolutely. Uh, no registration needed. You just show up. Um, you know, f- funny enough, it's like, we get anglers that are, that are coming to, you know, just fish for the day and they see the event happening and they're like, Hey, we're, we're going to drop our stuff for the day and we're going to come help you guys out. So yeah. Um, no, no commitment ahead of time needed. Just, um, show up and yeah, we'll have, uh, grabbers, buckets, trash bags. Um, I'd say bring your own gloves. Um, I don't think we've had the gloves in the past, but, uh, not a bad idea to have those on. And then I would say bring bug spray. Um, that's always probably one of the, the bigger complaints, especially when you get down by the reservoirs or, you know, some of the areas more the, you know, frog water areas and the um, grass and stuff like that. Uh, the mosquitoes can be nasty. So I would definitely say um, bring some bug spray and, and plan to use it. Yeah. And then the great thing, too, right, is you kind of work and then you all come back together and you have a great barbecue lunch. And, you know, Landon's gathered all these great prizes from all the sponsors, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's I. I'm amazed at what the sponsors kick in, um, every year. And so there's a, there's a great raffle at the end. Um, uh, but you know, kind of in that time as everybody's filtering in, um, you know, we stack all the trash in the trailer provided by parks and wildlife. We, we usually take a big group photo in front, celebrate, you know, what we accomplished for the day. Um, Landon's friend Jack's there. He, uh, cooks up a big barbecue for everybody. So we've got about a, you know, hour, hour and a half at the end of the event. It's kind of a big social hour. Um, it's a great chance to just meet other anglers. Um, you know, other like-minded, you know, folks in this community, um, you know, just kind of hang out, have a good time. We eat food and then uh, raffle off a bunch of great prizes. Yeah, very, very neat. And, you know, before I let you go this evening, Scott, 
you know, what's the best way for folks to follow your fishing adventures and all things clean the dream? So for, for all things clean the dream, um, I'd say, uh, you could, you know, either at land mayor fly fishing, um, land mayor fly fishing.com, um, at clean the dream, um, on Instagram, uh, at my friend Kramer on Instagram. And then if you're, you're interested in my, my own adventures, um, I'm at whiskey riffle on Instagram. Uh, well, there you go. Well, I'll drop all that stuff in the show notes and, uh, Scott, uh, I really appreciate you spending some time with me and I look forward to meeting you in person on the 27th. Yeah, I look forward to meeting you as well. Uh, thank you for having me on. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Take care. You too. You too.